I deserve it. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. All right, let's get started. Barack Obama met with Joe Biden and allegedly told him Donald Trump would win if Biden didn't make changes. Biden replied, thank you, son. Just park the car over there. Because, <laughs> you know, he doesn't know where he is. The, speaking of the president, he has now presided over a record-breaking 11 embassy evacuations. His second broken record after most kids sniffed in one hour. <laughs> Disgusting. Two Canadian men who were switched at birth 70 years ago finally received a formal apology from the government. Justin Trudeau can relate after just finding out his dad is Fidel Castro. <laughs> I don't know. According to new research, dogs can understand the meaning of nouns. They're also pretty good at understanding commands like sit. <laughs> I don't get it. A new report finds that inventories at pawn shops are exploding, which could be a sign that times remain tough for many Americans. The good news, I just bought Claudine Gay's glasses. <laughs> the new massive government spending bill signed Saturday bans flying pride flags at our embassies around the world. But then how will you find the best spots for brunch, asks Hamas. <laughs> That's how you find the best brunch spots in New York. You look for the pride flags. <laughs> Figured I'd explain it. <laughs> A new poll finds that church attendance has declined for most religious groups. I guess my nude hits on Fox and Friends weekends are paying off. <laughs> A new study shows that playground bullies grow up to earn more in middle age, which makes sense. Adults tend to have more lunch money. <laughs> Did you know that today is International Waffle Day? No wonder Brian Stelter is letting all his calls go to voicemail. Because <laughs> he's fat. <laughs> and finally, the FDA has agreed to remove posts warning against using ivermectin to treat COVID-19. But the agency still recommends you wear a mask if you're a horse's ass. <laughs> all right. Let's do a monologue. So a Berkeley professor is under fire for once again telling the truth. In an online student teacher forum, Professor Jonathan Shuchuk responded to a student seeking dating advice by saying, if you want a girlfriend, get out of the Bay Area. Solid advice, but it's the same advice I'd give someone seeking not just a decent date, but a decent apartment, a place to park without your windows getting smashed, and a sidewalk that's not an obstacle course of human turds. Get out of the Bay Area. It works for everything. Then the professor continued, quote, almost everywhere else on the planet is better for that dating. You'll be shocked by the stark differences in behavior of women in places where women are plentiful versus their behavior within artillery distance of San Jose and San Francisco. Now, maybe it's not the best idea to ask your college professor for dating tips. Mm -hmm. You wind up as lonely as me at an ugly man's convention. <laughs> But the professor makes a good point. In an area where options are scarce, you end up with fewer choices. Better to have the odds stacked in your favor. That's why I hit on women in the Planet Fitness locker room. <laughs> now, I don't want to speak for shoe chuck, although somebody probably needs to, because by now, Gavin Newsom must have a SWAT team surrounding his house. But really, what the professor is professing was simply the law of supply and demand. Apparently, it's his belief that there are fewer women in the area than straight males would like. And reading between the lines, that the women are, who are there are maybe slightly difficult. Translation, the personality of Joy Behar with the body of Joy Behar. <laughs> it's the type of female who thinks traditional means growing free range armpit hair. Oh. No, I agree. To us, this is simple math, but to the left, it's shockingly chauvinistic. Of course, the outrage that followed was as predictable as finding Kilmeade crying in the restroom. <laughs> Women students hyperventilated that they were being objectified, but some of them should be so lucky. The only thing objectifying them are their cats. 
And God forbid if one of these girls slips and falls, then there'll be the cat's fancy feast. <laughs> it is funny, though. Women feel objectified when you desire them, but now they're objectified when you try to get away from them. Now, as someone who is often objectified, I can tell you that denying the basic reality that most women love men does women no good. I try to tell them to resist the desire to smother me in whipped cream, but it only hurts them more. <laughs> but denying this basic truth of the sexes isn't liberating or fulfilling. It's what leads to Saturday nights alone writing Trey Gowdy erotica. <laughs> 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 I know. But it also leads to a miserable political party. Don't take my word for it. Here's James Carville, a longtime Democrat strategist. Quote, there are too many preachy females. Don't drink beer. Don't watch football. Don't eat hamburgers. The whole talk is about how women and women of color are going to decide this election. Dot, dot, dot. 48 percent of the people that vote are males. What Carville is describing is what Michael Malice calls the awfuls affluent white female liberals. And this is their dunce cap. <laughs> their main currency is not in life is not happiness, but outrage. They traffic in oversized empathy without the controls supplied by piggish, unthinking Neanderthal men. See, we men know our faults. We get it. We're callous. We rarely cry. We prefer boxing over book clubs. But our flaws are married to our strengths. We think about consequences, often to an extreme. Remember how every man was talking about the decline of the Roman Empire for months while women just looked at them confused? That's what men do. We see down the road, then buy a gun, take a self-defense class, install a bucket toilet in the game room. Women's strengths, empathy and feeling are wonderful, but unchecked, you end up in a weird place. And so do men. Like, say, competing in a woman's swim meet. <laughs> uh, that's the irony. It's the delusional empathy toward the latest causes that end up hurting women most, whether it's in crime, immigration, sports, and even relationships. You can only go so far cheering on the demise of society because it makes you feel something. And so the miserable mavens are willing to overlook what great men can do because great men aren't nice. Here's journalist Kara Swisher on Bill Maher's show slamming Elon Musk. He's a complicated guy. Oh, OK, sure. Why not? Well, That's, I mean, how about he's just not a complicated guy. He's just a jerk. And I can easily <laughs> prove he's a complicated guy because yesterday I saw on the news somebody who was paralyzed, mm -hmm. who was giddy with happiness because he was being able to play video games with his mind. Yep. That came from Neuralink. That's it, he, that's Elon's company. And so is, did but, my car. And so, you yeah, know, I get no, no I, I, I get I like I, those Elon. I, I like I like Tesla Elon. I like right, Neuralink right, Elon. Right. I even like Hyperloop Elon. It's it's Twitter right. slash X. -E I, I agree. Mm. Imagine how many quadriplegics heard that and wish they could give her the finger. <laughs> but an awful like Swisher would happily dispense with all that male achievement, you know, because he's a big jerk. But maybe, Kara, being indifferent to your feelings is necessary when saving the world. Something Swisher will never be capable of doing as she's too busy getting mad over tweets. So, of course, by now, the professor has been forced to meet with school officials, then issue a groveling apology stating that he didn't mean to blame the blameless. Sorry, Jonathan. But yeah, you did. And you were right over the target, buddy, because whoever the kid was who got your advice, you did him a favor. You told him the truth that they're not blameless. Angry, hyper-liberal women in the Bay Area are scaring off what would be their best partners. And so they're left alone with their causes. And if they want attention, they'll have to poop in public just like everyone else. <laughs> so we're left to ask why. Does it really make sense for the Democratic Party to constantly villainize 50% of the electorate? Look, men may not be the better half, but they're half. So why not meet us halfway? And we'll pick up the bill. Tom, you were quite the Lothario before you got married. That's right. <laughs> you were all over well, she, the... She's laughing at that, Craig. I, I know. I love that you used the word Lothario. That's yeah. great. Yeah, so I don't even know if I pronounced it correctly, actually. <laughs> I've never actually said that word out loud. Tom, did the professor say anything wrong? He just said, not for nothing, women in the suburbs are nicer than in the Bay Area. 
And then every woman in the Bay Area was like, ah! <laughs> like, they want they want him fired. I mean, yes. they're they, they're gonna they're gonna keep coming after this guy. And look at him; he's not exactly a macho macho man. <laughs> no, no. This is the kind of guy me and Joe beat up after hot yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> But I've said it. I've said it for years, Greg. Women are out of control. They are out of control. <laughs> yes. Are they out of control? They're out what of way? control, Greg. What are, in what way? Well, they've been, I mean, it's, they've been fed this diet of girl power and, and victimology, and they're inebriated on it. It's like being on uppers and downers at the same time. <laughs> and these women here are great. But they're on fire, Greg. <laughs> Admit it. I mean, Good women save. are on fire. Yeah. They are, I mean, take We're a look at Bay both. Bay Area women. Though. Right. But I, I just any, any woman around here, Mm-hmm. Just take a look at them, Greg. Do they look like they're afraid of anyone? No. <laughs> no. No, they're, they're not. confident. They're living it up. Yes. But, you know, remember a couple of years ago they had that, uh, you know, that big freak out over uh, um, the, uh, you know, women came out and said, uh, sorry, not sorry. Yes. Sorry, not sorry. I'm tired of saying sorry. Mm-hmm. And it's like, w- when do you say sorry? They're like, I'm not going to apologize for being a woman in the workforce. And it's like, I've never heard you apologize. (laughs) I haven't heard a woman apologize since Mary Tyler Moore threw that hat up in the air. (laughs) That is how old he is. Even the audience didn't get that reference. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Minneapolis. Back when that city mattered. Charlie, um, okay. As a woman. Yes. Or you say you are. um, Promise. Yes. What what is your take on this analysis? Well, I think that Like you had mentioned, I think the professor was spot on. His goal as their teacher is to give them the best information possible so that they can be successful in the real world. And he did just that. So I would give them props. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you look at a lot of the women in the Bay Area, specifically the story that came up this week about Mackenzie Scott, Jeff Bezos' Mm -hmm. ex-wife, she's probably out of their age range. So I'm not sure that they would go for her. But she just donated $640 million more out of her fortune to extreme left causes, helping illegals, migrant criminals, Mm -hmm. um, trans athletes. Mm -hmm. And I think the word delusional empathy really describes it because these are sects of life that she'll never have any real life crossover with, Mm -hmm. yet she has all of this empathy for and she wants to support. Uh, I just think it's wrong. And I think that a lot of women don't allow themselves to be treated like women. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was one uh, video on TikTok recently. A girl was treated to some drinks on a date and she said, oh, my gosh, the, the feminism just suddenly left my body. I mean, once women realize what it's like to be treated as a woman, maybe they'll start acting differently. Mm. Joe, imagine that you were actually dating a woman. <laughs> go, go on. Yes, go on. yes, yes. <laughs> Do you, uh, if you were going on this date, and I know this is hard for you to think about, mm. uh, do you worry that uh, you have you would not be able to please them because they have such a, 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 de- a defensive posture towards men? This is a rather specific question. <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad, yeah, let's call these women awfuls, okay? Because these women have called me awful for years. It's nice to be in <laughs> favor. This is the part, well, first, first thing I want to say is, this professor screwed up. Why is he on a, a chat group or whatever this is with his students talking about dating tips mm-hmm. at Berkeley? First mistake was bringing up even heterosexual dating tips. Yeah. He's already in hot water mm-hmm. mentioning that. Uh, so I think he screwed up doing that, but he makes a good point. Because no one wants to be with, uh, you, you hear some of these women say things like, uh, I'm a boss, no one tells me what to do. Mm-hmm. It's very, very masculine energy. But then when the stuff hits the fan, they say, why don't you guys man up? Mm-hmm. Well, what do you want from us? Yes. You know, and, it, and it, I look at it and I say, you, you, you can't have both of those things. They'll say, I, we, women rule the world. Oh, yeah, drop a spider on them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, right? Beyonce yeah. will just be running like yeah. crazy into traffic. And, and no one, the truth is, whether you're a male or a, woman, a, a female, no one wants to date someone who complains constantly, who's always angry, who's on antidepressants, whether you're a college student or you're a woman who's read my Tinder profile. <laughs> uh oh. All right, Kat. I don't want this to devolve into women bashing. As I said in my monologue, men have their faults. It's just that you have to realize your faults. Did this man, the professor, make a mistake? Well, I, I could not agree more with you that women with masculine energy are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um. <laughs> 
I did. Okay, the one thing that you said that I was like, come on, when you said men think about consequences. <laughs> you ever see Jackass? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. How, I, how yeah. many women were on that cast? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's a good point. It's a, it's My a sorority good, sister we, is actually on that cast now. So, but that's very new. Okay, <laughs> new. like you drive past the front. Men die of more of accidents, crashes, whatever. But I, obviously, I love men, or else I'd kill myself doing this job and working here on this show. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I don't. I, I personally don't feel a home in either party because I, I do think about consequences and the government's gotten so big mm. uh, and, and both. That's why I always have to vote libertarian, because I think actually quite a bit about the fall of the Roman Empire. And I actually thought that everybody actually did. Mm. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just you, you lost me on just that one. But other than that, I think, yeah, I guess the know. thing is um, men are more likely to take risks with their lives than women will, because women are biologically yeah. uh, are designed. so more like Likely to take risks with their genitals. Yes, that is yeah. true. That is. True. I've seen Maury yeah. as well. Yes, I don't even. I, I guess I should just go to break. <laughs> <laughs> no. Their expert witness was completely witless. Our video of the day comes to us from the hallowed halls of Congress, where Senator John Kennedy schooled pro skier Gus Schumacher. What a name. A young man brought in by the Democrats to be an expert witness on climate change. Roll it, Francine. What is carbon dioxide? <laughs> I'm, I went to high school, but that's uh, carbon dioxide is a, a gas. Okay. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a professional to talk about carbon dioxide so much, but. Well, you, you want us to abolish it, right? No, I, <laughs> there's always going to be carbon dioxide. Right. So, so what is it you want us to do? I no, no, let me back up because I, I want to. I mean, you're here as an expert. Tell me more about what carbon dioxide is. I'm here as an expert cross country skier who sees the changes in my winters and the landscape that I live in in Alaska. And so, carbon dioxide is what I see it as is you know, it's a gas that exists in our atmosphere. And what? Is it the major part of our atmosphere? Or? It's a huge part of our atmosphere, yeah. It's actually a very small part of our atmosphere. <laughs> oh, we tricked him. <laughs> well, the most stunning thing about this skier's testimony, not once did he use the word dude. <laughs> Got worse, though. How much will it cost for us to uh, become carbon neutral in the United States by 2050? I'm not a professional on that. I don't have an answer. You don't have any idea? No. You, you just think we ought to spend the money? I'm not an economist. It's going to cost trillions of dollars to become carbon neutral by 20,050, right? I do not know. You don't know. You just think we ought to do it? I, I don't have a great answer for you. You don't know? No. You just think we ought to spend the money and then see what happens? I think as an athlete, I think if we spend that money and invest in our future, hopefully those... Temperatures stop rising. I think as an athlete, your first mistake. <laughs> that was embarrassing. And I'm sure Democrats could have found a much better expert on white powder. <laughs> but... <laughs> Finally, Senator Kennedy brought up the young man's past tweets. On August 27th of 2020, you tweeted this, quote, I'm going to quote, police are paid with taxpayer dollars. If they are not answerable to us, we can demand new service. And that's what this is. Abolish the police in favor of that new service, end quote. You think we ought to abolish the police, do you? Again, not the topic I'm here to talk about today. I know, but, but you tweeted it. Do you think we ought to abolish the police? That's not what I'm here to talk about. Should we do that before or after we get rid of fossil fuels? I'm not going to address that. Mm, well, for a professional skier, it was all downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for next week when the Dems bring in a professional skateboarder to lecture us about Hamas. <laughs> Charlie, I kind of felt bad for him. But then again, I'm thinking if the Dems bring him in as a credible witness... It's on them, and they just basically served him up on a platter. Oh, yeah, he was a complete pawn for the Democratic Party. I actually 
do feel bad for him. I just, it was seven minutes long. When, when the link was sent, I was like, oh, seven minutes. You know how we all have ADD. Yeah. That was the quickest seven minutes of my life. That was so entertaining. I watch a lot of reality TV. That was one of the most entertaining things I've seen in so long. Mm. But just to give everyone an idea of how bad it went for him, and he realized it, he deleted his Twitter account, his ex account, instantly afterwards. <laughs> I guarantee you he's still having nightmares. But truly... <laughs> He knows about climate change just as well as any of the other Democrats that are pushing the $94 trillion green agenda. They have no idea what they're talking about. First, they were worried about acid rain, that it was global cooling, that it was global warming. Now it's some vague idea of climate change. They want tons of money for it. And uh, this was their expert for it. So good luck to you getting the job done. You know, Kat, I can't help but think he would have been a barrel of laughs, you know, at, at the lodge, <laughs> <laughs> slinging back some yeah, I'm sure at least he thinks he is. <laughs> yeah, he didn't listen. He did not do well. He should have been uh, at least trained better to deflect. Uh, yes. <laughs> although the one thing I got to say, I did not enjoy the bringing up of the tw- old yes. tweets yeah. because he's only 23 now. So these tweets, he was pro- he was a teenager when he yeah. was tweeting this stuff. I am, I am. I think that is so bad for society to bring up things people were posting as teenagers. I mean, mine mm-hmm. I, was a lot of emo lyrics, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> A lot of email like I would be there in Senator County be like oh I you on June 4th 2008 you posted I just want to break you down so badly like are you <laughs> violent and because he wouldn't know what taking back Sunday is just like you guys don't because you're all in your 50s and you probably were too popular to be emo um, <laughs> I was an evanescence girl oh really there you go yeah no not yeah I, I was real <laughs> shrouded in sadness but I think it's really bad for society to have you know tweets from when you're a teenager make you look like an idiot I think he did that all on his own with other stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah, Joe. Um, the fact is, it's like he's a cross country skier and he notices that the snow's <laughs> different. He notices <laughs> things. Yes, yes, he notices things. You know, I wanted to hate him uh, because he's very good looking and that pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> but- I do feel bad because he probably came in there thinking, oh, I'll say the nice things. We don't want the world to end and all that. And then you don't know what carbon dioxide is. I mean, come on, it's carbon monoxide and it's two of them. <laughs> but this this shows like what are these congressional hearings with yes. special celebrity guest stars like it's the love boat mm-hmm. it's just wasting time you know yeah. you wouldn't say uh, we have a climate expert let's put him on the top of the mountain and see how he handles his black diamond on the way down it's idiotic it, it reminds me of when there's a storm and they take the meteorologist and they put them out there and they're getting sliced in half by a stop sign it's like we'll believe you that yeah. there's a storm out there. You yes. don't need to do this. So, yeah, I, I felt bad for him, but it, at least he's, he said, I'm not an expert, which you didn't get that from Greta Thunberg. Yeah. And also, yeah. he's a high school graduate, and he didn't get that from her either. <laughs> that is yeah. true. That Poor is Greta true. Thunberg. <laughs> yes. Oh, she hasn't called me in weeks, Tom. You know, uh, we paid, probably paid for his airfare, his hotel. We paid for all of that. Yes. And uh, you look, I, I know athletes don't usually do that great under questioning, but OJ was better on the stand. <laughs> you know? You're setting the bar pretty high. He, he was better on the stand than a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> he should have gone total Spicoli, though. It would have been charming if he was like, oh, it's a gas, man. It's yeah, I agree. It's definitely I agree. a gas. <laughs> Should have had pizza delivered. I agree. I, he should have just leaned in. Yeah, that <laughs> was different, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. He should have said, "Dude, yeah. you know what's your problem, man? Just having some fun, dude. Skiing sucks right now." Yeah, I could totally watch a cop buddy show with those two, <laughs> Senator Kennedy oh, yeah. and the Jeff Spicoli guy solving oh, yeah. crimes at at resorts. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that I would watch the hell out of that. Is cross country skiing a sport, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that's interesting. I don't think so. No, I don't think. I think that's a subject to debate. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. Oh, you look scrumptious. I could eat every one of you, and I just might. <laughs> All right. The ladies of The View have now expressed regret over their treatment of Kate Middleton, saying they, quote, fell down a rabbit hole, which raises a key question. How the hell did they fit? <laughs> <laughs> the L.A. and Miami homes of rapper Sean Combs have been raided by Homeland Security in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. In other news, Combs is changing his name from Diddy 
to didn't. <laughs> Jill Biden spent Sunday morning at a Soul Cycle spin class. To make her feel at home, some of the cyclists fell over. <laughs> a new study claims that your facial features may have been influenced by what your mother ate during pregnancy. If that's true, then Nancy Pelosi's mom ate a lot of Tupperware. <laughs> a new poll finds that 73% of voters are fine with the term illegal immigrant. The remaining 23, 27% of voters were illegal immigrants. <laughs> McDonald's just announced plans to sell Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah, in response, you'll never guess who took the day off to celebrate. <laughs> it's never going to end. Never over. All right, let's do a monologue. And so Florida forbids social media for kids. Governor Ron DeSantis just signed a bill making it illegal for kids under 14 to join a social media platform while requiring parental permission for 14 and 15 year olds. Any existing social media account created by a child under 14 must be deleted by the company. Failure to do so could expose the company to expensive fines and lawsuits. Weird, the measure has received bipartisan support. Odd. The last thing to receive bipartisan support was the let's throw Jesse Waters into a vat of boiling oil bill. <laughs> I co-sponsored that one. <laughs> But it's refreshing that even some Democrats want to protect kids, especially in Florida, where Dems would rather pleasure an alligator than admit DeSantis is right. What the hell? I'm glad we put uh, the little black thing over his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> don't, want any, don't want any lawsuits from the reptile community. Is that girl? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, oh, I never forget a jawline. Yeah. Of course, Florida is expecting a challenge that it violates the First Amendment which ironically will come from the same people who want adults banned for asking a woman at Planet Fitness to throw on a jock strap. But they're ready for it. Here's Florida House Speaker Paul Renner. You will not find a line in this bill that addresses good speech or bad speech because that would violate the First Amendment. We've, we've not addressed that at all. What we have addressed is the addictive features that are at the heart of why children stay on these platforms for hours and hours on end. Yeah, he's talking about notification alerts and autoplay videos, which make social media as addictive as my legendary back rubs. <clears throat> the secret, no hands. <laughs> but the content of the speech isn't at issue. There's no viewpoint discrimination. The idea is that social media itself is harmful to kids, not just any particular message being sent on it. Keep in mind, DeSantis already vetoed another version of this bill that would have banned social media for anyone under the age of 16. Why does this matter? Good question. Well, young brains aren't like adult brains. Like Joe Biden's dinner, they're mushy and unformed. <laughs> These brains are not fully developed until the mid to late 20s, or in my case, the mid to late never. Those growing brains can't handle the constant bombardment of bullying, peer pressure, gender indoctrination, climate change, panic, and racial hysteria. They'll have plenty of time for that, you know, when they go to college. Now, does this law limit a child's freedom? Yes. Does our society limit a child's freedom already? Yes. You got to be 16 to drive a car, 18 to vote. Hell, you got to be 21 just to legally drink a beer. We don't let kids smoke cigarettes either, no matter how sexy it makes them look. But all those things are arguably less damaging than putting a child on TikTok or putting TikTok into a child's brains. Do you remember how social media took off? It was something called Facebook. Why was it called Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg created it at Harvard to judge the looks of other classmates, which is funny given that Zuckerberg looks like something you'd find stuck to a glue trap. <laughs> So it began as something that would make people feel like crap, then we shouldn't be surprised how many people feel like crap now because of it. But Facebook exploded, mainly because people wanted to check out who got fat after high school. <laughs> Along the way, it became much more a way to share information and news faster than we could have ever imagined. And without thinking much, the adults let the kids have access without pondering the long-term consequences it could have on those kids. 
and they were able to share and soak up bad content faster than a urinal cake at a Port Authority restroom. <laughs> we're talking stuff that risks their lives with idiotic stunts, insane delusional rants that tell them there are 72 genders, creeps that tell them anorexia is cool, obesity is a plus, and body mutilation is a rebellion against patriarchy. Social media is the largest medical experiment in history where we allow strangers to pump in a powerful toxic drug right into kids' vulnerable brains. It's not a fair fight for the parents or their brats. It's tough enough being a kid as it is, especially if they're slow and can't outrun my van. <laughs> but social media makes it even tougher. And the developers are well aware that these apps are distracting and destructive. In China, where TikTok was created, content's filtered so kids under 14 only see videos about patriotism, science, and education, and with a limit of 40 minutes per day. After that, get back to work, kiddos. Those Nikes won't stitch themselves. <laughs> But today you have predators pretending to be activists bent on bending your kid into something unrecognizable. So stopping it isn't a crazy idea, right? If we wanna let kids be kids, then it's time for adults to act like adults. Instead of shrugging, maybe protect them. Instead of burying our faces in our phones, we should take a look on what's on, what's on theirs. So kudos to DeSantis for slamming on the brakes. After all, 14 year olds in Florida, they shouldn't be on TikTok. They should be on Cops where they belong. <laughs> Streaming right now on Fox Nation. <laughs> Emily, as the closest person to 14, I believe, if you were that age now, how would you feel about this? So as a child who's addicted to social media, I'm all for this. But I can also attest that this is not actually going to prevent anyone from signing up because I'm pretty sure when I, I'm totally incriminating myself, when I signed up for Instagram, I think I was in the fifth grade and it was totally not allowed, but there was no verification. Mm -hmm. So if someone's actually going to reinsure for whatever means, like once they sign up that they can attest that they are in fact of age, then this is great. But I knew that we were doomed when I was talking to some middle schoolers in Starbucks and I was like, get off your phone, go play with roly polies. And they were like, what's that? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, we're doomed. This is so bad. What are you doing talking to middle schoolers at Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> what, are star what are middle schoolers are, doing at Starbucks? In his turf, I incriminated man. myself that. twice. <laughs> He's working How do you street. do it? <laughs> Take notes. This is why I always have a clipboard. I always tell the parents, I'm doing a survey. <laughs> <laughs> I can get in anywhere with a clipboard. Anywhere. Jim, including your house. I say I'm the, with the electric company, and I'm here to turn you on. <laughs> Where am I? Jim, as somebody who probably has no social media, I've never seen you on social media. Uh, maybe AOL instant message. <laughs> Do you have any insight on this topic? Yeah, well, I have a 13-year-old son, so I think it's great. Yeah. I support it because he's on Instagram, and what happens is his friends are out doing something. He sees them, they're posted. He's like, oh, how come I'm not there? Yeah. You know, so he gets that, like, deal with that later in life. You know, he's already worrying that they don't like him. Mm. I'm like, first of all, you're not there because you don't have a car. Okay, yeah. that's one reason. <laughs> and so uh, it's, that's the same thing. Like, I don't like, when I'm out, I tell people, don't take a picture where at some event because you're mm. going to get someone in the comments, how come you didn't invite me? Because no one likes you. Yeah. That's why we didn't invite you. But you know what? If he is off social media, then you got to interact with him. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We follow each other. Yeah, yeah you're okay. Nobody yeah. has it set up where it's private, so only uh, he gets No, I mean like, in person. Yeah. I mean, you do you talk to him face to face? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just checking. Yeah, we well, yeah. Greg. I know, but you never know. Maybe he has some kind no, of usually restraining talk to order. Me. It's Jim Florentine we're talking about. I don't think this thing goes far, far enough. I think they should ban any adult that posts a video of themselves doing a Facebook challenge. <laughs> or, or any men who post shirtless selfies. Mm -hmm. Let's ban that, too. Ban I better too. take that one down. I yeah, please. <laughs> I'm out. Kat, um, I'm out. you look like a 14-year-old. 14-year-old boy, yeah. Boy, 14-year-old boy. A 14-year-old male skateboarder. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How would you have handled this? Do you think this is good? Do you think it's too late? That's the question. Is it too late? Okay, so, so this doesn't work. No. So first of all, children should not be on social media. No one should be, based on, like, <laughs> based on a lot of the things I see online. Your, your grandfather shouldn't be on there either. That's true. Uh, but like Emily pointed out, that there'd be a, some kind of verification. That would be even worse because you compare it to beer or cigarettes, right? You have to sh like show your ID at a bar or show your ID to buy cigarettes. 
I don't want everyone to have to give their ID to big tech to have to have, to have an Instagram account or a Facebook account, which would be the only way that you really could verify this. Mm -hmm. So my idea would be if you are really very concerned about your child being on social media, do not allow them to be on social media. Mm. Like have parents do it. That's that's too hard. I, I know that it's so big now that the government people from both sides, they want the government to solve their problems. And the only difference is based on what, you know, what problems those are. But I have enough faith in the parents of Florida that they can handle this themselves. Mm, have you seen? <clears throat> yeah. And, all, and if you live in Florida, why would you even go on the Internet? There's so much stuff there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's fact, you just walk what? outside. Florida was the original Internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see naked people. Florida man was the original meme. Yeah. Tyrus, Kat makes an interesting point about the opposite end of the spectrum. It's the elderly who are really falling prey <laughs> yeah. to social media scams. We both watch The Beekeeper. We right. know the truth. But it's, here's the thing. You, you made the joke in your monologue about you can't catch them in your van, right? <laughs> well, no one looks for the van anymore. That's it's, true. It, no one's worried about a van on the corner because we lock up. We don't let them go outside by themselves. You never have to worry about seeing a bunch of kids playing two-hand touch football on the streets anymore or baseball or stickball because you're made sure that the guy in the van doesn't have an opportunity. Well, he doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't need to get a van. Mm -hmm. He just needs to be a 13-year-old girl on social media mm. that he can talk to whoever he wants to. Cat is right. Parents need to be parents, mm -hmm. which means you have to put down. Yeah. Okay, that's what – when they say kids need to do this, you need to – I watch my daughter make a, a – an Apple account in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Her name is of my birthday. Congratulations. Welcome to Apple. Give me that. Yeah. <laughs> so and it was verified. OK. Um, catching my teenage son hopping on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. Are you 18? Yup. <laughs> OK. So that's the problem. I know you don't like the ID thing, but that's the only the IDs is the only way to stop mm. the pedophiles. It's not so much mom and dad need to take personal responsibility, mm -hmm. but you want to stop sex trafficking. You want to stop fentanyl pushing. You want to stop. You think these dealers and these pedophiles and these kidnappers, they put no, they pretend to be other things. And our kids fall for it because mom and dad are also falling for it. It's never ending. And here's the thing. Facebook is fine with it. Mm -hmm. Anyone who had like for those of us, we all have been on TV where we have a million fake accounts. OK, and I, well, I, there's one account in particular where I'm getting letters all the time from elderly ladies, my base, who are sending money to help me <laughs> escape from my wife. <laughs> and here's the cold part. They're emailing my social media to complain about fake me. Mm -hmm. And she runs the social media. So they're like <laughs> talking about running off to me with me to her. Mm -hmm. And if she could help them get a hold of me so we can run off. <laughs> and then I got to hear about fake me. All right, we got to move on. I just want everybody to take 10 seconds and remember what it was like before the internet, like what you were doing. I, it's, it is incredible if you think about it, what were you doing before this? And can you ever go back? I don't think we can. All right, that was a fun exercise. Now everybody remove their clothes. Yes, indeed, happy. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everybody. So today is Manatee Appreciation Day. So tonight, in honor of manatees, we won't be doing any jokes about The View. <laughs> it's also National Viagra Day, or what First Lady Jill Biden calls the worst day of the year. <laughs> The Fairfax County Board of Supervisors has named Easter Sunday 2024 as Transgender Visibility Day. Events will be open to anyone who thinks eggs come out of roosters. <laughs> Whippy Goldberg interrupted The View. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Whippy interrupted The View to scold an audience member for recording on his phone. After all, each additional camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> An Italian model is complaining that she's so physically perfect, people assume she was generated by AI. She says the only way she can get men to believe she's a real woman is by having her do math. Uh, sexist on Viagra would say. Yes. 
Finally, former President Donald Trump has endorsed a brand new Bible that now sells for $60. Everything's the same except for a few changes. There's now a casino in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Jesus turns water into Trump wine. <clears throat> and throughout the Bible, Satan is now referred to as a total loser. <laughs> All right. So here in New York City, the subway system is running a special lottery. But unlike my used underwear raffle, it's a lottery that no one wants to win. Because with random attacks on the trains rising faster than truth social stock price, your chances of getting through the subway system without encountering a raving lunatic are about the same as getting through Jesse's book. <laughs> New York subway is so dangerous these days, it could be Ukraine, or even San Francisco, or that time I ate Taco Bell right before my water aerobics class. <laughs> so as New York Democrat leaders, all of whom, by the way, have armed protection details, hold press conferences telling us they feel our pain and are praying for the families, what they conveniently ignore is that none of this is actually random. It's as predictable as women fainting when I forget to close my robe. Because <laughs> it's the policies of these leaders, most of which were forced through in the wake of George Floyd, that are directly causing all of this. It's why today blue cities are all turning red, blood red. Here in NYC, the man arrested for the murder of NYPD officer Jonathan Diller during a car stop had 21 prior arrests, including multiple felonies. Hey, Dems. I know you don't like the old three strikes rule, but could we maybe get a 20 strikes rule? His partner, who was driving the car, had 14 priors, including attempted murder. He was out on bail on a gun charge. I've gotten worse slaps on the wrist from stealing Dana's culottes. <laughs> but that's the pair Officer Diller approached Monday night. He was 31 years old, a three-year cop working a tough neighborhood for lousy pay with a wife and a one-year-old at home. His accused shooter was such a committed career criminal, the scumbag reportedly had a knife stashed in his rectum, which suggests he may have known he'd be arrested later that night. I mean, I doubt it was just because his glove compartment was full. But if you can't look at the three players involved in this tragedy and come away feeling that our society is getting something very wrong, then all I can say is I hope NBC is paying you well. Now, earlier that day, that same day, NYPD Brass held a press conference announcing a deployment of 800 cops to the subway to reassure a skittish public that the transit system is safe. But what are they going to do? What are they going to do next? Arrest Daniel Penny again? But their actions turned out to be about as reassuring as a Wuhan lab report, because not long after that, a commuter in Harlem was shoved in front of a train and killed. The alleged perp, Carlton McPherson, is a known mental case with a long rap sheet and an open warrant for assault. I'm sure that's little consolation to subway riders that the person who randomly kills you is crazy. The next day at the very same subway station, a female fare jumper punched a cop attempting to summons her and actually breaking his nose. That's taking it a bit too far, don't you think, even if it is Women's History Month? Is it any wonder New York City subway riders feel about as safe as a guest at a P. Diddy pool party? Damn. Still, the worst part of those parties is the music. <laughs> I'm so sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, women are taking a TikTok to post about being randomly punched in the face on the street by a perfect stranger. No word if it's this guy. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Perfect. Smattering of appropriate applause. <laughs> but who cares? Doesn't seem that our liberal leaders do. And why is that? Well, if your doctrine dictates that this is a racist, oppressive system, then any laws stemming from the system are equally racist and evil. And that means criminality is merely the act of the oppressed. They matter more than you. And it's showing in bail, jail, and arrest policies. Any rational attempt at self-preservation is really just racism. 
Sure, the NYPD is majority minority, and almost its entire command staff is minority, and our mayor is black. Doesn't matter. Somehow the entire system is racist, and white supremacy is everywhere. So much so, a Minnesota school district is now hiring a whiteness superintendent to, quote, examine the presence of whiteness in its system and structures. That's code for you can punch teachers and no one learns to read. So it's clear we are paralyzed by malicious idiots who see oppression behind any effort to fight crime. They replace rational thinking with delusional empathy, where any efforts based on law and order or self-defense is considered inhumane. Manic hysteria over race trumps common sense. And of course, the unspoken part is who this hurts most. Meet Jaden Perkins, 11 years old, stabbed to death trying to protect his mom when the geniuses, geniuses at Illinois Prisoner Review Board released her violent ex, despite her pleading for a restraining order. The board denied any responsibility later. Can't let the truth get in the way of decarceration. Gotta undo that systemic racism. But then the emails came out and Illinois Governor Pritzker, a big bail reformer himself, had to announce that the two board members responsible resigned in disgrace. Like Henry VIII's wives, he needed a couple of heads. <laughs> so here's the boy's killer, career domestic abuser Crosetti Brand. Do you think the problem is that he just needed more education on white privilege? You won't hear a peep out of Black Lives Matter for Jaden. What are they going to do, build a police station? You just know... Sadly, Jaden Perkins and his mom felt really unsafe, and it wasn't from white supremacy, but from a homicidal ex and a system that enabled him. The truth today, if you don't feel safe, that's on you. It has to be. Otherwise, common sense may assert itself, and the Dems would never win another election. Charles, very heavy, serious topic today, but it just, I think where I'm coming from is like, what's the point in bringing this stuff up if they know it's happening and they won't do anything about it? Well, you're not going to do anything that you're orchestrating. They're the authors of this. Mm -hmm. So, and you mentioned bail, jail, and something else, but what we didn't mention was sentencing. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing we got to do is rip up the sentencing book. I mean, Sometimes I see people come out for assault three years mm -hmm. or, or, or rape two years. You know, it's like, are you kidding me? We need to have really like extraordinarily long uh, sentences. I mean, extraordinarily long, like not the kind you go in in two years in jail and think like, you know, get a little bit better at what you did and come out. And, and this time I'll really, you know, rob a 7-Eleven and not get caught. You know, so first and foremost, but the whole thing is orchestrated. It really, really is. And listen. The Democrats stay in power by keeping black people uneducated, afraid, and angry. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect toxic, it's a toxic mix, but it's been perfect for them. They get the vote. They've been getting it for a long time, and it works for them. Unfortunately, the victims are black people, but, you know, we don't have the so-called leaders. Whoever ascends typically is paid off. And, you know, they play the shakedown game. And, you know, like a guy like Sharpton will smoking cigars in a, in a five-star hotel while folks in St. Louis are riding and, and fighting with police, you know, and then he'll go on TV, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a hell of a cycle. I mean, I pray we get out of it. I'm, I'm trying to do my part. I'm, I'm going to do my part in my, the rest of my life to try to get out of it, no matter what kind of names or slings or arrows are thrown at me, because it's, it's, it's been devastating. We have given Democrats our lives for 60 years, and we've got nothing to show for it but misery. Joe, it must be awkward for you being a white supremacist. <laughs> you know what gave him away? The members only jacket. Oh, <laughs> oh Joe. <laughs> Slamming the M.O. Explain yourself, Joe. Iris, <laughs> Charles, I get called a white supremacist all the time because of my meticulous dedication to fitness. <laughs> this body is a temple, and I'll tell you what, you guys really sandbagged me with this serious topic and serious answer. I've got a hole to dig myself out of again. But to Charles's point, I think uh, sentencing shouldn't be like baseball. It should be like when I go bowling. You're lucky if you get one strike. Uh, <laughs> but I'll say this, this is the weirdest. Oh, come on, keep up, everyone. These are coming from the fans. Don't on to you. <laughs> But the, another <laughs> interesting thing is that uh, even Biden during the State of the Union said that crime is down. But what really happened is the FBI changed its crime reporting system 
after 2020, which is kind of convenient timing. Mm -hmm. And then they don't accept it if cities don't use the new format. And a lot of major cities don't use the new format, so it doesn't get counted in the crime statistics. Everything is a bait and switch, Greg. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, no bail for violent uh, for, for nonviolent offenders becomes no bail for violent offenders. Mm. Uh, uh, therapy for the mentally ill criminals uh, becomes just go ahead and push someone in front of a train. We're not going to do anything. Yes, absolutely. Very, very, uh, very astute commentary, Joe. I'm not just a pretty face, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Kat. Uh, pretty, pretty gloomy topic, but it's just uh, we almost we try to even avoid doing crime because it's so somber. But what do we do? What yeah. do we do? Yeah, it's never been a worse time to be a woman who likes to walk around the city listening to music and thinking about her feelings. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's like becoming national news. And it's like a, on TikTok that all these girls are getting punched in the face on the street, which is crazy because, and, and I've said this repeatedly, you'd think with all this going on that we'd see some kind of reduction in the price to live here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with, no, it's still, a lot of people don't realize it's still... The average is almost $4,000 to live in an apartment that's like 600 square feet, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's like you go out on the street, you risk getting punched in the face, but if you stay at home, you're going to want to punch your own face because, like, <laughs> it's so small and crap. You probably have three roommates. I, I, I just, it, it's absolutely, I mean, or you, like, take the subway. People are scared to take the subway and not for no reason. Or you get into a car and, like, if you want to go one mile, you better have $40 in 45 minutes. Like, yeah. I, I, it's cl clearly the city is not working. Things are not working. People are noticing that. And something needs to change. You know, um... Cyrus, I'm going to be, I, I don't think this is even a conspiracy anymore, but I feel like we're in the teardown phase of American capitalism. That there's, a, there's a revolution in which the radicals are using this mask of compassion mm -hmm. to undo our civilized order. If you speak up, you are considered hateful if you, if you say this is, this is not working. Right, because there's nothing more dangerous in this country as an independent man, or even worse, a black man. So the reason why they won't pick guys like us to be leaders is because we lead by example, and we're not going to take a check to go smoke cigars in a five-star rest, unless we paid for it, Yeah, <laughs> which I'm not opposed to. <laughs> but before I get started this, you talk about kindness. How dare you, sir? Mm -hmm. You started this monologue besmirching manatees. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, and it's Manatee Month, and then you make you say they look like the View. Like that's just cold-blooded. I know. I apologize. They've done enough, but it's just an uncomfortable subject in general. That the only way you're going to be safe is to be on defense, mm -hmm. which then leads to when men step in or when anyone goes to step in, you end up with Mr. Penny ends up you end up in jail. Mm -hmm. So what do you do now to help protect? Because the police can't do anything, and even worse, when they do. To Charles's point, they're just going to be set free by unaffected yeah. lawyers and, and attorney generals who don't give a damn about what's going on. So you're going to have to start. If women going out, you got to start protect. You have to think mm -hmm. defensively. You got to carry the mace, or you got to carry the. the we, when I was a kid, I remember my mom had like one of those old bats. It was like a keychain. Mm -hmm. At least you get a swing or something. Yeah. You have to start thinking defensively, especially in big cities, and, and across the board, because there's no help coming. And the administration's would, fine with it. It'd be great if you could carry an actual mace, you know, <laughs> from medieval times. You could probably get away with it the right outfit. Guys. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, we got to move up. Move up, move on. Happy Thursday, everyone. Good to see you. All right. So earlier today, Barack Obama joined President Biden for a fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. Also at the event, Bill Clinton and approximately 20 terrified Rockettes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of dresses there, huh? According to research, cinnamon may be helpful in curing baldness. And already Cinnabon has been besieged by calls from one man. It's true. He's bald? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. No. I know. He's one of you. He's Reagan hair. <laughs> Today is Fox anchor Todd Pyro's birthday, otherwise known as National Caucasian Day. <laughs> Researchers have discovered that sperm whales can fend off attacks from orcas by spraying diarrhea in their faces. Nice. 
It's the same reason I eat burritos before riding the subway. <laughs> you should see my aim. <laughs> Southwest Airlines will begin offering the first red-eye overnight flights in its history. Spirit will also offer red-eye flights. Just ask for water and they'll hit you with tear gas. <laughs> A math teacher in Texas has legally changed his name to, quote, literally, literally anybody else to get write in votes for president. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is thinking of changing his name to Donald Trump. <laughs> Qatar, Qatar Airways has introduced Sama, the world's first AI flight attendant. In the event of a loss of cabin pressure, Sama doesn't give a. <laughs> Oh, boy. Illegal immigrant children are overcrowding in New York City schools and teachers are furious. Conditions are so jam packed. None of the students are in the mood for sex. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same way. The Intel community is being warned that the term blacklisted is racist. If only there's a way to find the person who made that insane claim and make sure he never works again. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that joke. I, was, I had my worries. Earlier today, former FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Oh, really? Which means he'll finally get his wish of being publicly traded. Terrible. <laughs> Let's do a monologue. Are we coming apart at the seams because of Democrat regimes? When important stuff gets neglected, it falls apart as expected. Escaping the failed city of Baltimore got a little harder this week after a freighter plowed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And as far as metaphors go, that's more on the nose than the powder on Hunter Biden's schnoz. We're still piecing together what happened, but already activists sprung into action. A writer at TheRoot.com says once it's rebuilt, the bridge should be renamed after a prominent African-American instead of the white guy who wrote the Star Spangled Banner but once owned slaves. Well, they could replace him with P. Diddy. He also wrote songs. <laughs> and he also owned slaves. <laughs> <laughs> and so with President Biden pledging taxpayer money to rebuild it, everyone will be on the hook for the privilege of erasing Francis Scott Key. And with that kind of focus on useless woke virtue signaling, it's no surprise things are falling apart right in front of us. Every damn thing is broken Since America let woke in They'll take your money to fix it And still call you a racist dipshit Infrastructures left abandoned Don't expect no help from Brandon Everything is falling apart True, lately it feels like everything's coming apart at the seams, and not just if you're Joy Behar's moo moo. <laughs> there aren't even seams to a moo moo. But think about it cities, borders, planes, trains, automobiles, bridges, ships, the justice system, the economy, biology, education, housing are aging politicians. Meanwhile, we used to have trains that stay on tracks, doors that stay on planes, crooks who stay in jails, squatters who stay out of homes, pervs who stay out of schools, lawmakers who didn't inject embryonic fluid to get through the day. But that's what happens when the people in charge focus on identity politics, foreign wars, social media, and women with boners. Thanks for coming on. Yes. Granted, that's a technical phrase. Granted, some of the stuff on this list obviously isn't all on Biden, but it feels like this is what happens with chronic neglect. And we saw that phenomenon this week with the literal collapse of the bridge. It wasn't the first time that ship crashed into something in Belgium. It they collided with a container terminal. Luckily, nobody was injured or killed that time. This time, not so lucky. 
And things are more likely to go wrong when all the other systems are failing. And they're failing because of neglect as all our attention is paid to other things. The only thing that seems to be working just fine is our smartphones. Isn't it hilarious that the things that are bad for our children are also made by children? <laughs> Circle of life, people. But when activists in the media who enable them jump to talking about renaming the bridge, it's just another sign of how unserious we are as a society. The shortest distance between two points is a fatal accident and an accusation of racism. But don't worry, Mayor Pete's on the case. He hasn't blamed this on racism <laughs> yet. But give him time. If a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Fine, fine, okay, okay. But people like Pete can focus on the past because they're far removed from the real present world. Meanwhile, the rest of us have to live in the system he neglects. A theory by a scientist named John Ioendis sheds light on why stuff like this keeps happening. He compares us to an army of ants caught in an ant mill where whole societies are trapped in a death spiral, a vicious cycle of self-reinforcing dysfunctional behavior marked by continuous flawed de decision-making, single-minded focus on one set of solutions, denial, distrust, micromanagement, dogmatic thinking, and learned helplessness. Well, that's a lot of big words. <laughs> But they render a very simple explanation. We took our eye off the ball. Yeah. Our ancestors built an amazing system based on reciprocity where we could overcome our differences if we focused on a mutually beneficial collaboration. Some call it capitalism. Many call it imperfect. But despite its flaws, it remained the greatest system this world has seen, mainly because it got rid of conflicts over lineage. In favor of trade, commerce, we built cities, towns, and bridges pretty fast. Some people... They got more than others, but if everyone was equal, which is an impossibility, there would be no incentive to collaborate at all. We'd expect to get paid for doing nothing, which is how a lot of our systems appear today. Hmm. The goal, of course, was equal opportunity, and we're trying hard to get there. But this success made the offspring of our ancestors bored and complacent. And armed with bad ideas churned out by misery conveyor belts known as college, they decided that what's far more important than improving things that worked was the trendy crap that would tear them apart. Identity politics, wokeism, the eternal stain of oppression. It's fun to be outraged, and it's easy when you don't have to get your hands dirty. But when you don't deal with concrete problems, you get concrete problems. And the foundation starts to crumble. Focus only on the window dressing and not the smashed windows. What do you expect? It's ironic when you think about it, only after those windows are gone are we able to see things clearly. And it's certainly not a view worth bragging about. Dave, welcome to the show. It's a Thank pleasure you. having you. Con congratulations on your new podcast Thank on the you. Bill Maher Network. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure it will be wonderful. Am I crazy to think the world is falling apart and should we blame Biden? Uh, if you're crazy, then I'm crazy too. Okay. Am I, am I right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, listen. I don't want to be right on this, but it's just called reality mm -hmm. at this point. And maybe it's an age thing as well. I've been around too long and you just see how it used to be. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, yeah, you look and I have, a, I have two kids in college right now. My daughter called me. She's like, Mom, hold on tight. This might be the end when you look at all of the things that are happening and kind of the why behind them. And the, to me, it's not just like a uh, coincidence. Mm -hmm. There's like darkness, yeah. evil Weird involved stuff. in a lot of this. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, and I don't, I don't like it, but that's where we are. So what do we do to fix it? I actually built a panic room inside my panic room. <laughs> and inside that one, oatmeal. I know. I don't know why either. I'd be panicked the other way out of the room. <laughs> yes. I hate that. Kurt, uh, do you feel as uh, crazy uh, or, or, or I don't know, um, I don't know, just uneasy about the future? Okay. Just to give you context, I just did Rogan and then Alex Jones and then this. So, yeah. <laughs> I'd say. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Sage, you don't tell Bill Morton of that stuff, do you? Because he is not aware. I don't know if you've seen his new rules. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. What are you talking about, fat people? <laughs> yeah. No, he hasn't heard the news. Yes. <laughs> don't tell him. 
<laughs> you don't like it. Don't you know, say you know nothing. What? I'm bigger than he is. I could take it. <laughs> he he's, got, he's got Trump hands. He's got little he's hands. A very, I, it's he, some kind of psychology. You don't like him because they have the same hands. I think I can take him. We're both about the same size. Well, obviously, but also <laughs> <Pay -per> review. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he was interviewing Robert De Niro. Yeah, I saw I can't it. even blame De Niro because Bill, you're going to ask De Niro. A guy who sounds like the guy from being there. Yes. If, if instead of talking about the garden, he did try to talk about politics. Yeah. Yeah. It was you guys didn't see being there at all, did you? <laughs> Peter Sellers. They weren't. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know that I, movie does not I stand up to time. I saw these gray heads and thought maybe they knew who Peter Sellers was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Already attacking the audience. It was because of the ball joke, wasn't it? It was. I've been mad about it the whole time. <laughs> yes. Are you what I call a million hair? Like you're privileged. I'm, I, I'm doing all right. At a higher rate than me. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Look at this stuff. It's He's great. And, I, and this is real, unlike Jesse. All right, Kat. <laughs> Kat, do you think it's the priorities that are leading us into this dark place? Well, <laughs> congrats on your hair or whatever. But um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I also something the scientist brought up was he, he placed it on overreactions in terms of policy in response to a crisis, which mm -hmm. that was the whole COVID thing, essentially, yes, and a lot of the centralization of power. And that, to me, is something I seem to think about more than a lot of other people do, which is we focus so much on which specific people are going to be in power. And in my view, not enough on how much power that those people have. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, thank you. <laughs> because... We wouldn't ha it wouldn't ha wouldn't matter as much who was in power if they didn't have so much of it. It's so centralized. There's a, basically a handful of people that are making even, the, the, you know, so many decisions for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was not supposed to be like that, and it shouldn't be like that. Wait, but wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What? Wait. Um, okay, but what if we gave all the rest of our money to Ukraine? Do you think, <laughs> do you think that slot machine will pay out finally? <laughs> What do you think, Tyrus? Do you feel I, like the world or the United States is falling apart? No. No. I, I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Because you're Gulliver, a giant man. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing. My entire life, I've always weighed mm -hmm. consequences to my actions. Mm -hmm. Right? So if someone's saying something annoying I don't like, if I reach over, <laughs> I know there's a good chance that I'm going to get arrested, mm -hmm. lose my career, and go to jail. Mm -hmm. But not in this new world. No. I can do that, be out in the hour, <laughs> still be here in time to work, <laughs> and then go back and do it again. Yeah. I but mean, that, but it's, that's because there's a reason for that. Yeah, it's because, <laughs> because it's change. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that while we're flipping out, they are not. Mm -hmm. And as long, all you need to know was, was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, where he had a press conference. And he, the point of the press conference was to correct himself. Instead of saying illegal alien, he said newcomer. <laughs> that is all you need to know. Okay? Sci-fi. <laughs> Which means is, you have to understand, everyone in here, I don't know if you know a chicken or ever been around a chicken, but you're all eggs now. And if they crack a few eggs to get where they need to go, they're fine with it because the only eggs that are complaining is the crack conservative ones, and mm -hmm. they don't care. Yeah. So... Biden is fine with what's going on. He's so fine with what's going on. He's at a fundraiser with Obama and Bill. And isn't it hosted by Lizzo? Isn't it yeah, Lizzo? I think so. So she's under investigation for like doing horrible things to her workers. Doesn't <laughs> matter because she's on the left team. It, I'm thinking about getting traded because you can do whatever the hell you want. Like, yeah. Yeah. So the only way you can fix this is you got to vote. So all I hope for is the independents and women finally get tired of being treated like the way they're being treated, and they do something about it. You have a law and order opportunity to get things back straight, or four more years of just running around doing whatever you want. All right. Our video of the day comes to us from President Trump, who recently teamed up with Lee Greenwood to create the God Bless the USA Bible. Roll it. Proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood. Who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA? in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country, and I truly believe that we need to bring them back, and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. We love God, and we have to protect 
anything that is pro-God. We must make America pray again. Got a lot of Bibles in his house, but he's got a point. America under Joe Biden has most of us on our knees. We actually reached out to Trump for comment to hear more about his thoughts on the Bible. And he got back to us, I think. I wonder what he thinks about Adam and Eve. Frankly, as far as Adam and Eve go, I would never take fruit from a naked woman, especially Stormy Daniels. Also, I don't eat fruit. I think it's very nasty. Diet Coke, that's a different story. They say, sure, we love the Diet Coke. I'd take a Diet Coke from Nancy Pelosi, frankly, even though she's a nasty, nasty woman. Did you see that picture of her in a bikini? So nasty. I think she had two Diet Cokes stuffed into that bathing suit, if you know what I'm saying, frankly. I mean, that could have made Lazarus return from his grave. <laughs> All right. What about Moses? Moses, let's talk about Moses. Moses wandered the desert for 40 years. That didn't happen to me in Scottsdale because I learned to play golf so good, frankly. His supporters, think of it, worshipped a golden cow. They say, sir, a golden cow. I bet they love the view, right? No offense to the view. I'm sure they're lovely to some, but frankly, fat women just aren't my type. What can I say? Talk about a view. That's a view, really a panoramic. You can't even, you got to do wide angle. We got Easter coming up. He has risen. He, she, they, them has risen. It's all woke. I don't think these women could rise out of a chair. They need a forklift, frankly, or a crane, I think. Uh, can't say I disagree. All right. What about Noah? Any thoughts on him? Oh, I love Noah. I talk, had a great call with him, perfect phone call with Noah today. I see problems before they happen, but I have a bigger boat, frankly, much bigger. But there's no live animals on mine, except for when I want fresh feel. So fresh, I love fresh feel. They say, sir, that's going to make the animal rights people go crazy, sir. They already are crazy. You know, probably, frankly, because they don't get enough meat. They have no nutrients. They're pencil thin, just like Adam Schiff's neck. Pencil neck. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that was uh, Tyler Fisher doing it. <laughs> oh, my God. Wonderful. There he is, the little guy. All right, Dagan. Um, uh, what do you think of Trump <laughs> selling the Bible? It's very Trump. <laughs> well, one, it causes the Biden supporters and all the left wing bags to kind of own themselves because they're trying to make fun of him mm -hmm. for selling Bibles. And instead, they're mocking the Bible. Mm. And so... Also, what are you going to do? All right, you might dare to knock a MAGA hat off somebody's head, but you're going to knock a Bible out of somebody's hand, and then I get to sit back and watch you burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's Biden got on the flip side? What, Biden's agnostic bomb for your knee boo-boo after you fall? <laughs> That's the best you got. Yeah. Kat, what do you think about this? Is it a little cheesy or is it, uh, you know, you don't have to buy it. I think he might watch this and get the idea for an audiobook <laughs> where, like, Trump reads the Bible. I but, would buy that. Like, yeah. I mean, like, today, right? I, like, in it, like, in his own words, like, today's Good Friday. He <laughs> talks about, like, crooked Judas and the haters and the losers. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I, I mean, people like he's he's doing this during holy. It's like, of course he is. Mm -hmm. Of of course he is. And you know what else? People are going to buy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, reading the description of this, it's like comes with a big, large, easy to read, beautiful font or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, you, you don't have to buy it, but you know what? People are going to. You look at you, white evangelicals, like 80% of them vote for Donald Trump. No matter what, how many times people have pointed out, oh, well, Trump did this and Trump did that. Clearly, they don't care. He has said before the Bible is his favorite book. <laughs> yes. I'm surprised there hasn't been an audio version already. You don't have to like it, but people will, and yeah. they will buy it. You know, and it's funny. It's like... Uh, oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> but they, it they, is. Tyrus, they're trying oh. to drain him with lawfare, and now they make fun of him for trying to raise money. Listen, I, I think only President Trump 
This is why I want at least one debate. He's like, sir, you had $174 million in fines to pay. He's like, yeah, and the Lord paid it for me. <laughs> like, I think, I think, I think, I just, I, I can't talk trash because I'm not a religious dude, right? But I, I respect the rules of religion because I think when the country follows them, we're a better country, right? But, uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. And I'm, I got four kids and three baby mamas, man. I need as much money as I get. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the street version of the Bible with Tyrus. <laughs> the Lord said unto thee, to the young man, no, Diddy. <laughs> nice. In his name we pray. Yes. Charlie, why should he limit it to, you know, Christianity? Why not do a version of the Koran or the <laughs> Or the Torah. Yeah, I think that 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 might not work as well. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but it is always the same with these people. It's always these people who care the least about what God has to say, who become the most offended when Donald Trump supposedly is trying to, uh, you know, benefit from or commercialize off the Bible. And, and but it, and when I first heard about it, I just dismissed it because you hear so much of. You know, so, so much of the outrage, you're just like, okay, this is really stupid. But then I sat and listened, watched the video, and I watched the video, and I was like, oh, this is so fantastic. And the reason it's so great is because he goes right to the point. He's not being, like, subtle about it. No. He's being like, this is what we need to do. <laughs> and he's like, he's, like, defending the Bible in the, in the public square, which is actually, I think, is a, is a very smart thing to be doing. And, and he's not apologizing for it. Does and anybody get a royalty? Well, yeah, there is a financial aspect to it, but there is to any Bible you buy. Yeah, every Bible. That's what I meant. Like, it's a, like a every Bible. Gets paid. Who gets the money when you buy a Bible? Right. But the point is Can't. that it's, it's Donald like, where Trump. Where does it go? Who's the author? Yeah, but don't. It's, <laughs> it's, this is my only question, Charlie. Yeah. Who's the, the author who gets the money? The copyright has expired. The, okay. It. The copyright has expired. Therefore, there is no way to do that. It's, it's, what are, there are other books like that, right? Yeah, every book that's over, like, 50 years old, the copyright oh. expires. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> All right. You're well, thinking about uh, yourself right yes, now. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> All, you, All you have to do is change one word on the <laughs> end of each chapter of the Bible, and it technically be a new book. That's true. Gutfeld. That's true. All right. <laughs>